Hey guys, this is Tabio Swaby, and today, today I'm going to show you an easy way to take on the two Rojang monsters in the Muscle Monkey Madness event quest of Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Yeah, so Capcom gave us a present in the form of the buff body Alpha Plus armor set. Yep, this four-piece special armor set doesn't shy away from showing some skin, making it quite in demand for male and female exhibitionist hunters alike. The only problem is that it requires you to go through not one, but two Rojang monsters to get it. Yep, this mission ain't monkeying around, that's for sure. And again, if you think that's bad, I've got five words for you. Level 140, Dual, Apex, Rajay. <laughs> yeah, anybody who's played Monster Hunter 4, you certainly knows about that hunt. <laughs> and the fact that back then you had to stand still while using mega potions, had no mantles, and also couldn't clutch slam monsters. And you've got what can be best described as monkey cancer. <laughs> <sighs> On that note, here's my guide on how to cheese Iceborne's version for double monkey trouble. I'll go through my recommended item loadout, my suggested weapon, as well as my recommended strategy to make this hunt easier and more manageable. <laughs> so the Mega Potion and Max Potion are pretty self-explanatory. Since you can't access your tent, you basically need to bring all the healing items that you can with you. You can also throw in an Ancient Potion here, but I uh, don't like hitting Kelby, so I normally get them from drops. Well done steak is in case you really have a bad hunt and the rations from the item chest aren't enough to max out your stamina. And then bringing crafting mats means you can increase your total number of Mega Potions to 20 and your Max Potions to 7. That should be enough to tide you against the two Rajang, especially when you add the four First Aid Med Pluses from the chest. The 10 herbs or herbs is also for making 10 potions in case the hunt doesn't go as smoothly as you want and you need just that extra bit of healing to finish off the last monster. Now here are the buffing items. The Power Charm and Power Talon provide a permanent attack buff as long as you have them in your pouch. The Armor Charm and Armor Talon do the same thing for your defense. And the Demon Drug or Mega Demon Drug buff your attack throughout the hunt as long as you don't faint. Or cart. Then of course you have Might Seed, which provides a temporary attack boost for about three minutes, I believe, so you'll need to reapply it every few minutes. Now here are the utility items that I bring. The Forecaster is great for a couple of reasons. One is to retreat in case of emergency and, you know, if you get beat up pretty badly. The other is to give you a way to sharpen more safely and mix items, especially when you've got two Rajang on the field at the same time. The Flash Pod increases your options in case you get grabbed and thrown against a wall, but you'll need to equip it before you get grabbed. The traps are good to have for a couple of reasons. One is to hold the monster in place so you can dish out free damage via your weapon or bombs. The other is to capture one or both monsters to make the fight go faster. Just note that you can't use Pitfall Traps against regular form Rajang, and you can't use Shock Traps against Electrified or Enraged Rajang. If you're not sure if a monster is damaged enough to be captured, you can hit the monster with two Trank Bombs first, and then set your trap. That way, if it isn't capturable yet, you can at least dish out more damage as soon as they're trapped without wasting time pelting them with Trank Bombs. Now, normally I usually use three weapons when I try to cheese monsters. That would be either a Heavy Bowgun with a Shield, a Lance, or a Greatsword. Now, for this hunt, I'll be using one of my favorites, the Critical Draw Greatsword. Go big, that's what I say. Now, folks who have been watching my channel in the past know that this is my go-to weapon against Tempered and Art Tempered Kirin. That's because back in base world, I was never able to clear Art Tempered Kirin with a team because it basically increased the chances for people to make a mistake and cart. In contrast, I was able to solo Art Tempered Kirin countless times with my Critical GS setup. Now, if you already have a Critical Draw Greatsword set, that's great. Just go ahead and use that. In case you don't have one, here's a pretty basic one that I actually put together during my first week when I was reviewing the game way back when, so it has some pretty basic decorations as well. So this set is basically centered around four pieces of Vulcana armor to activate Frostcraft, which increases your attack power when your weapon is sheathed for a certain amount of time. It works really well with Critical Draw, which ensures that your first attack after drawing a weapon pretty much lands a critical hit. This also means that you don't need Critical Eye and only need Critical Boost. Since you typically need to sheathe after each attack, I also added Max Quick Sheath, especially since Rojang is super aggressive and can hit you more often without it. Max Health Boost and Divine Blessing 2 is there for quality of life purposes. Fortify, meanwhile, is there to increase your attack in case you cart, which could very well happen during this hunt. Now, carting in Monster Hunter is normally like a great way to get depressed. One of the things I like about Fortify is once you see the message Fortify activated, 
It actually helps pick your spirits right up because you know you're coming back with a lot more attack. By the way, I have Max Handicraft in there because I'm using the Shaurai Shvalda Greatsword and want to reduce the number of times I need to sharpen. But feel free to swap it out with more attack-oriented skills if you're using a greatsword that has a longer sharpness bar. I also recommend bringing the Rocksteady and Temporal Mantles to help you wall slam or jang with a flint shot. For Palico gear, I use the Heal Spire Stooge to help hold aggro. This can be a bit of a pain if your Palico sets it up in the wrong spot, but most of the time, it's great for getting attention away from you and allows you to safely get some free hits in. Now let me explain the flow of the hunt, some of which you've already seen in the hunt that I've been showing in this video. As you can see, I'm actually playing super safe. That means this hunt can go even faster if you're more aggressive and tackle counter more. But the point here is to just use basic draw attacks so even someone who's never used a weapon before can use this strategy. Now first off, make sure to eat feline safeguard in the canteen. This basically works like feline insurance, but you're guaranteed to always have it show up if you have the requisite canteen ingredients. To get feline safeguard permanently added to your canteen list, I've added a link to Gaijin Hunter's tutorial video in the description. Also to make sure that feline safeguard triggers, use either a meal voucher or a gourmet voucher. So to start off the hunt, chug a demon drug or a mega demon drug and then also eat a might seed. Then pick up a stone for your slinger, and then after that, put on one of your mantles and use it to either soften or jang, wall slam it, or both. And then while it's down, I usually do two uncharged greatsword hits on its head, followed by a fully charged true charge slash. Anyway, your first true charge combo should inflict massive giant enemy crab damage on the monster. This should also enrage Rajang once he stands up. This is actually the reason why I wall slam him first, because you can't wall slam him anymore once he's mad, which honestly doesn't really take that much to do. Rajang definitely has an anger management problem. Next up, I focus on getting my first mount, which should only take a couple of aerial hits at most. Also, make sure to charge up your charge slash finisher while mounted for extra damage. Now, unlike the wall slam, the mount knockdown does not last as long, so just either charge the first hit or the second one and then roll out. Now, at this point, it should be even more mad and become super enraged. And you'll know this because before entering the second level of rage, Rajang will flex and roar, which can blow you back if you're close. His arms will then be wrapped in red aura. To take him out of this rage mode, you will need to hit his tail several times. You can still hit his head, but the tail is usually the safer bet, especially since hitting his arms at this point will make you bounce unless you have Mind's Eye. Now when fighting Rajang, there are several moves that you'll want to take advantage of because they have long recovery times. This is especially true when he's in rage and you need to hit the tail. These moves are pretty much shown throughout the video, but I'll describe specific ones to give you an idea. First is the three hit jumping punch. This is the move where he does two punches and then like a jumping like third punch that hits the ground. When Rajang does this, you should have time to hit the tail once. So this is the one where he jumps in the air and then shoots a thunderbolt to the ground. Once he lands, you should have time to do one regular hit again. Next is the running headbutt. This is normally hard to take advantage of when he's in the middle of the arena because he's moving forward at a fast speed. But if he happens to do it right in front of a wall, then it gives you a lot of time to hit the tail as well. Next is the double fist ground pound. So it'll raise both fists and then pound the ground with them. Almost like a little frog splash. This actually has a pretty long recovery time, so as long as you're right behind him when he does it, you should be able to get in at least two hits or maybe one charged hit. And then you've got the Kamehameha, so this Thunder Beam has the longest recovery out of all these moves, and so you can get in several hits if you start as the move is just coming out. He also has a multi-rush, like, rushing punch, and that one just like the rushing headbutt. You can actually hit the tail, like, from behind while he's doing the combo. And then it's even better if he does a combo against the wall, because he's then he's he's stuck there while you can hit the tail. Just be careful about hitting it once the move is done, because it has actually a pretty fast recovery, so he can combo into something else right after it. So those are the moves that you can take advantage of. Conversely, there are also moves that you want to watch out for. So Rajang stands up and rears back both arms, and then does a spinning, sort of punching motion, almost like a top. This one comes out quick. And it usually comes out right when you're around Rajang, and so it hits around him, so just be careful of it. And then you have the aerial Blanca roll. And here Rajang jumps up in the air, curls into a ball, and then hones in on you. Then there's one of his most dangerous moves, which is the one where he flexes his arms, like a muscle man pose. And then jumps up in the air, and then lands in the ground, like pounding it with like thunder or electricity. So Rajang does this when he's super enraged, and it inflicts a lot of damage. So when you see him like starting to flex, just run away from Rajang. And then as he jumps up and before he lands, just do a Superman dive. Otherwise you can roll at the last minute, but your window will be tighter. Another move that you have to watch out for is the grab. So in here he'll like 
dash forward with his arms kind of open and then grab you. Once you see it starting out, just roll or Superman dive it when you see it coming. If you do get grabbed, you have like three options. One is to use a flash pod if you have it equipped right before you get grabbed. Because once you're grabbed, you can't equip it anymore. Another is to use the slinger ammo that Rajang drops. Unlike stones, you can actually use the slinger ammo to stop Rajang's ground pound like after a grab. And then the third option is to tilt your analog stick to the right and then just mash that dodge button before he punches down. This will make you escape before the fist hits the ground actually. And the only exception to this one is if there's an obstacle to your right because then that will block you from dodging right and so you'll pretty much eat the whole hit. When this happens, hopefully you just have enough HP to survive it or maybe get lucky and have Divine Blessing trigger. Anyway, when Rojang is in super rage mode, it usually takes about 3 to 4 hits of the tail to knock him out, at least with this set that I'm using, and then even less if you've got Fortify activated. Once you knock him out of super rage mode, he'll also drop a piece of Rojang material, so make sure you pick that up. Knocking him out of super rage mode turns him into like normal Rojang once again, so after that you can just wear your second mantle and then repeat the process. The only difference is that mounting this time around takes more aerial hits, so if you want you don't even need to do that. Also, if you don't have a mantle active for some reason, you can just wait for one of the moves mentioned above that has long recovery, and then you can use that as an opportunity to clutch and slam Rojang. Now around the 10 minute mark, the second Rojang will show up. At this point, some folks will use the gates to separate them so you can concentrate on just fighting one of them. I mean, after all, who in their right mind would want to fight two Rojangs at the same time? <laughs> I'll tell you who, that would be you and me. <laughs> and in case you're wondering why, well, here's the deal. The Rajangs can actually do a crazy amount of damage to each other. I'm talking anywhere between 100 to 500 points of damage a hit depending on the attack. So you'll definitely want to lure them into each other so they beat the heck out of each other. <laughs> hey, free damage! Yeah, and during this process, normally you'll want to target the first one still, since it should be pretty damaged at this point. Just be careful and pick your spots when attacking, like when one of them gets downed or knocked down for example. Of course, during this phase, you can feel free to attack the second one as well, if the opportunity presents itself. Now, one thing I tried to do during my first hunt was to trap them on the other side together and see if I could just watch them pummel each other. A lot of times, though, what I've noticed is that they'll stop attacking each other. So instead of just trapping them on that one side, it's better if you just guide them toward each other. However, there is one thing that I use the gate for. So when you feel that one of the Rajangs is about to kick the bucket, pretty much, just go toward the opposite end of the arena, and then just fight them there until the first one goes down. After that, you can lure the second Rajang to the other side, and then run quickly back to the side where the Rajang died, and then raise the gates. This will allow you to carve it in peace, and then far cast her back to camp. Then you can sharpen your weapon, mix items, eat a might seed, and then fight the remaining Rajang. And the reason you want to trap the first Rajang on the opposite end is that that gate is going to be up for a while, and so Having the Rajang on the other side means you can fight it right away. And then on the second phase, this is also a good time to do your first wall slam and then first mount against the second Rajang, which you likely couldn't do when the two of them were on the field at the same time. Anyway, there you go, an easy way to cheese the double Rajang fight. Seriously, another great thing about fighting Rajang solo with a critical draw of GS is that it really familiarizes you with Rajang's patterns since you have to spot openings in order to attack. This footage I'm showing for this video is actually from my third hunt, and as you can see, I actually got pretty comfortable against the monster by this point. And keep in mind that Rajang actually happens to be one of those monsters that really used to stress me out in past games. <laughs> Even more so than like Devil Joe. I just usually have a tough time with Rajang. But this method makes Rajang actually kind of easy. You might even say kind of cheesy. <laughs> so what is your favorite way to hunt two Rajangs? As always, please feel free to leave any thoughts or questions you may have in the comment section. Once again, this is Tabi Sobi, and thank you for watching. Now go get that buff bod. <laughs> you know you want it.